proneurogenesis. Basically, what we're looking at is compounds in the apple itself, which actually may aid in basically helping with learning and memory in adults through neurogenesis. Now, keep in mind, we're going to focus primarily more on the peel itself, where we have the compound quercetin. Now, the DHBA, obviously, is a novel candidate, looks promising as well, which may be uh, recognized as actually being a natural preservative produced by the apple itself. However, though, for dosaging and the animal model, we're probably going to focus primarily more on the quercetin. So let's get right into the study as follows. Compounds from apples may boost brain function. Natural compounds found in apples and other fruits may help stimulate the production of new brain cells, which may have implications for learning and memory in according to a new study in animals or mice published in STEM reports. There's a caveat to this. We're going to review again in a second. This is the peel. Did not see any benefit in apple juice in basically the outcomes we're about to look at. So apple juice, not so much, at least according to this study. The flesh of the apple, the peel of the apple, yes. But to proceed as follows. Researchers showed that high concentrations of phytonutrients from apples stimulate the generation of new neurons, a process called neurogenesis. The study showed that laboratory-grown stem cells from adult mouse brains generated more neurons and were protected from cell death when quercetin or dehydroxy Benzoic, should be benzoic, acid, DHBA, phytonutrients commonly found in apples were added to the cultures. Subsequent tests in mice showed that in distinct structures of the adult brain associated with learning and memory. That's the, the main take from the research here in reference to quercetin in the apple peel. To proceed as follows. Stem cells multiplied and generated more neurons when the mice were given high doses of quercetin. We're going to get that dosage in a second, or DHPA. Again, the natural preservative produces the apple. The effect of neurogenesis was comparable to effects seen after physical exercise. That is also a main takeaway, too. A lot of individuals may be incapacitated for various reasons or unable to move or be as active as they would like. So... The interesting aspect here, at least in the animal model, is that quercetin duplicated kind of that same effect. Physical exercise, a result towards neurogenesis with helping with learning and memory, hypothetically. All right, a known stimulus for neurogenesis. The study suggests that natural compounds in fruits, such as quercetin, I want to say quercetin, quercetin, DHBA, and potentially others, may act in synergy to promote neurogenesis and brain function when given in high concentrations. So think of it this way. It's like taking uh, the flesh and the peel, dehydrating the apple basically, and making just like an apple capsule uh, to keep all the possible synergistic nutrients in place. But in the meantime, until that synergy is actually basically uh, interpreted greater, quercetin, DHBA. Now, let's go right into the full research as follows. Not a lot to take away from here, except the fact is the benefits of the flesh of the apple and the peel. But here we go. A little technical. And then we're going to get into the dosaging and the types of apples that they utilized in the study itself. Let's go to the summary first. Quercetin promotes hippocampal precursor cell survival and differentiation. Quercetin induces endogenous antioxidants and antioxidants antioxidants and the AKT pathway. Again, apple juice supplementation, at least according to the one study here, has no effect on adult neurogenesis or learning. In three, five, and there's that N, dehydroxybenzoic acid, as opposed to benzoic acid as we covered prior, increases precursor cell proliferation and neurogenesis. All right, let's get right into the research supplemental information, actually. Not exactly published in the full study, unless you go to the supplemental materials and download the PDF. All right, the in vivo quercetin treatment. You notice right here, the quercetin, not 
an, uh, an outlandish amount. Look at 50 milligrams per kilogram in the animal model itself. And of course here you could see it was uh, developed an oral garbage. So basically it was the course didn't operate orally, not necessarily like injected into the bloodstream or anything like that. So that's an important takeaway. Second, let's go to the supplementary table, supp uh, supplementary table in reference to the apples utilized. Now these are the flavonoid contents of the apples. Now I put a little arrow next to Panova because it appears they use Panova apples primarily in the research here. And let's proceed to the next part right now. The extract was prepared from Panova apple cultivar, 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 uh, which was obtained from a local apple orchard. I've been doing a lot of talking today, so now I'm tripping over my tongue. So you get right there as far as the information set. But also too, let's go back to that total flavonoid content. So if you want to pause it for a second and see which one has the most beneficial compounds in quantity, uh, for those that want to, instead of you looking for quercetin as a supplement, want to just eat the apples himself, there's the information for you. All right, let's get back right into the study itself. Full study, I'm gonna go to the summary from the full study, a little technical, but you'll get the gist. It gives the whole synopsis of the outcome and its potential benefit. So let's look at that summary. As mammals evolve with exposure to particular diets, and this is in the full study, naturally abundant compounds may have become part of the set of environmental co-determinants that shape brain structure and function. Here, quoting the researchers, we investigated whether bioactive factors found in apples directly affect hippocampal neurogenesis in the adult males. We found that quercetin, the most abundant flavanol in apple peel, was anti proliferative at high concentrations, but pro-neurogenic at low concentrations. This was confirmed in vivo, meaning the living organism, with intraperitoneal, uh, <laughs> intraperitoneal delivered quercetin promoting survival and neuronal differentiation without affecting proliferation. Using a bioassay guided fractionation approach, we also identified additional proneurogenic compounds in apple flesh uh, that were not related to the flavonoids. We found that 3,5-dehydroxybenzoic acid significantly increased neural precursor cell proliferation and neurogenesis as well. This work shows that both flavonoids and 3,5-dehydroxybenzoic acid are proneurogenic, not only by activating precursor cell proliferation, but also by promoting cell cycle, exit, cellular survival, and neuronal differentiation. And basically to conclude, what does this mean for the average individual? It has implications strongly for basically maintaining a good ability to learn and a good, strong working memory. So all the information's there. I'll have a link to the full study especially but extremely, extremely enlightening because some of the most powerful, powerful tools that we have available to maintain health still to this day are being discovered in food that has always been right before our eyes. Again, Ralph Trick Channel signing off. Also too, I always lead to this as a side note, those in data analytics in reference to uh, pandemic mitigation and so on and so forth. We have our Saturday late night uh, reveal a reference to data globally around the world that you don't normally uh, uh, pervy to, uh, pervy to, I should say, uh, in major news outlets. So for example, like three or four weeks ago, we discovered the decline in the, uh, the basically positive cases and that's still continuing today. And you get to see how that basically is in relation to every single part of the world is noticing the exact same decline at the exact same time which is really kind of freaky considering different climates, populations, and so on and so forth. It's always welcome to you on Saturday night or I should say Sunday morning. And I always enjoy people viewing that. But again, for the information, reference to apple peel, apple flesh. So we're looking primarily at quercetin uh, in the animal model. There's 50 milligrams per kilogram. Of course, the animal model is on animals, mice. And of course, in order to have this fully validated, future tests have to be conducted obviously with people itself but again gratitude thank you thank you much for listening and look forward to you all on saturday catch you then bye